Ever wish you didn't have radiator problems? Ever wish you didn't have a radiator? Ever wish you could sail through mud or snow? Ever wish your car didn't guzzle so much gas? The VW Group are one of the largest manufacturers of cars in the entire world. But they all had very, very humble beginnings. In fact, it all started with one car, the Type 1, better known to you and me as the Beetle. So to tell the history of the Volkswagen Beetle is to tell the history of Volkswagen in its entirety. Post-war Germany, that's the First World War, was a very dismal place. After Germany's defeat, the Treaty of Versailles had dictated huge war reparations to be paid. These repayments had pretty much crippled the country financially and poverty was widespread. Most people couldn't afford a car, even though Germany had car manufacturing, but Germans just couldn't afford them. The best they could do was a motorcycle most of the time. In 1933, the National Socialists came to power and with them Hitler assumed control of Germany. One of the things he set out to do was to give the citizens of the Third Reich the same kind of access to cars as Americans had. The so-called people's car, or in German, Volkswagen, would have to be cheap, reliable and easy to build. It had to be able to travel at 100 kilometers an hour and transport two adults and three children. It had to be as affordable as a motorcycle and easy to drive. Many companies submitted proposals, but it was Ferdinand Porsche with his aerodynamic rear-engined rear-wheel drive design that was chosen. Now there were claims that his design had been borrowed from Czechoslovakian manufacturer Tatra. A matter that was never fully resolved before Germany's invasion of the country a few years later. But copyright notwithstanding, the design met the requirements and preparations were made to put the car into production. To fund it and to make sure people could afford to pay for the cars when they were ready, the German government set up a savings scheme. Anyone who wanted to could put aside five Reichsmarks of their salary per week and would in time save up the 996 Reichsmarks it would take to buy the car. 336,000 people signed up to the scheme. Unfortunately for those people though, the majority of the funds were seized by the Soviet army when they invaded Germany in 1945, and none of the people who had diligently saved for their cars received their vehicle. By the end of the war, the factory found itself in British-occupied Germany. The original plan was to dismantle the factory, ship it back to the UK, and use it for car manufacturing in Great Britain. But no one wanted it. Not one company wanted to take on the factory. The story of Volkswagen could have ended right there. But thanks to some intervention from the British military, the factory stayed open manufacturing Type 1s for the British Armed Forces in Germany. The popularity of the Type 1 grew and soon Beetles were being shipped around the globe. The Beetle became one of the most popular cars across the world and by 1955, one million had been produced it would go on to sell over 16 million, breaking the previously held record of the Model T. The Beetle is the most manufactured car in history. Manufacturing in the German factory went on until 1977, and in fact continued in the Pueblo factory in Mexico until 2003. What's so remarkable about the Beetle is not necessarily how long it was manufactured for, it's how little it changed over that time. A Volkswagen is never changed to make it look different, only to make it work better. There are other cars that try to be cars for the populace, cheap, reliable cars that could do the job you needed them to do. The 2CV, the Mini, the Fiat 500. 
And all of them have lasting legacies. All of them have new versions. All of them have a place in our hearts. But none of them were manufactured for as long as this car was. This 1977 Volkswagen Beetle features a 1.2 liter straight four engine in the back, of course, drum brakes, which are an adventure to use, and a four speed manual gearbox, which does the trick. The zero to 62 mile an hour mark in this Volkswagen Beetle from 1977 is 35 seconds. That's one more than it has horsepower. It's really, really easy to fall in love with classic cars when you go out and drive them. You're not just filled with the enjoyment of being behind the wheel of a great car. It's a wave of nostalgia, even for a time that you didn't live through. There's something about the car that just radiates the time it's from. This car, however, doesn't just radiate the year it's from or even the decade. It's an entire century wrapped up in metal. If you had to pick a single object to sum up the 20th century, there's only a few things you could really think of. And the Beetle is definitely one of them. Something that was transformed from a fascist ideal to a hippie icon, to a fashion object. There's nothing quite like it. In 1997, while the original Beetle was still in production in some parts of the world, Volkswagen introduced the new Beetle. This bubble-bodied, teeny bopper of a car may have been wildly popular, but a true Beetle it was not. The engine was in the front, as were the driven wheels, both of which could have been forgiven if it just hadn't been so cutesy. Now though, there is a new, new Beetle, and the benefit this Beetle has over the previous one is that it's a really, really good looking car. Really, does it deserve to bear the Beetle name? Well, let's think about that. The original Beetle was a practical car designed purely to get you from A to B. This is a luxury car. It's based on the Golf platform, but it's really only ever going to be marketed as a, as a fun alternative to the Golf. Someone who wants something a bit more design driven, something a bit more fun. Driving a Beetle is meant to be about getting from A to B simply, efficiently, no fuss. It just happened to happen in a car that was beautiful. This, on the other hand, is designed to be good looking. It's designed to be fun and quirky. And that's a bit of a shame, really. We've lost that practical nature, that bare bones driving experience. There are other cars that offer it now, even within the Volkswagen range. You could say the Up is more of a spiritual successor to the Beetle than the new Beetle is. But I'm just glad they've dropped the old design and given us what might be the best looking car Volkswagen make right now. You could argue for or against whether or not the spirit of the original Beetle is dead. You could discuss until you're blue in the face whether or not this car is worthy of having the Beetle name printed on its back. But if the name is going to continue, if Volkswagen are going to keep the Beetle alive, I'm glad it's on something as good looking as this. From pre-war Nazi Germany to post-war European recovery, from Brazil, Mexico, United States and Japan and everywhere in between, the Volkswagen Beetle has been one of the key cars of the 20th century. Even with a new face in the 21st century, when people look back and ask what was a motor car, they could do far worse than be described one of these. Volkswagen.